This is part two of the videos discussing the financial statements, working with financial statements. We will start now talking about uh, sustainable growth payout and retention ratios. First, a comment on payout and retention, those two words. When talking about these items, the way the income statement works and the balance sheet uh, works and them two together, you have your revenues minus all costs and expenses and you end up with net income. That's your profit. Now, what a company can do, a corporation can do with those profits, they can keep it within the company to use it and, and grow it. And so, and that's called retained earnings. So the company chooses to keep all the profit inside the corporation. We'll call all that 100% retained earnings. Or they can go ahead and pay dividends. All of it. It's not common, but they could if they wanted to. Or they can do a combination. Pay some of the net income out in dividends. And then uh, uh, another portion, keep it, retain it. So when you see this word payout and retention, they're talking about dividends or retained earnings. So the way we look at it as a ratio is, well, how much, what percentage, what piece is going out as dividends and how much is being retained. So the dividend payout ratio, if you do it at a per share instead of total, it would be your dividends per share divided by the earnings per share, and that'll be the ratio. Now, notice it says there one minus B. We mentioned that dividends and retain earnings. So we're gonna call retain earnings B and then dividends as we're using. So if it goes out in, the entire thing is 100%, one, minus, and then you can take the difference. If one is 60%, the other one is 40%. And that's why we do one minus the other one. So then the retention ratio would be how much the company keeps and retain earnings. And these are a couple of ways. There's, you may see other ways to calculate this number. This is just the way we're doing here. So you can understand when we say, give me the dividend payout ratio and the retention ratio. Now, remember this plus this must equal one. So whichever approach you use, when you add the dividend payout ratio, and the retention ratio, they must equal to one. And that's all they're saying here. How much is going out in dividends? How much is being retained by the corporation? Now, what happens is once we understand these numbers, we want to know things like how much the firm can grow assets using retained earnings as the only source of financing. We know this also as a retain, uh, internal uh, sources of capital, meaning, okay, without borrowing money, without selling equity, can we grow the company with the money we have that we have retained from the profits? And that's what they call the internal growth rate. So the way you calculate the internal growth rate, you take your return on assets times B. That B is what we spoke about here, the retention ratio divided by one minus the return on asset times B, the retention ratio. And that is gonna give you a percentage and that's your internal growth rate. So you, it gives you a percentage at which rate can the assets grow with just internal financing, not having to borrow money or sell more stock. And then we have the sustainable growth rate how much the firm can grow by using internally generated funds and issuing debt. So now we're not going to sell equity. We just want to know how much can we do with what we have, the retained earnings, and using debt. Now, you remember earlier when we talked about the return on equity, ROE, we talked about that piece that uh, may represent the liabilities, or can you can get a sense of how much debt? And that's why return on equity is in the formula. So when you break down the formula in the smallest version possible, the sustainable growth rate, meaning retained earnings and debt, 
you can use the return equity times the retention ratio divided by one minus the return equity times the retention ratio. So again, the difference between internal growth rate and sustainable growth rate is that this one has no debt involved and you're not issuing new equity. So you're just using your retained earnings, the equity you already have. Here, you're going to use equity plus debt. But when I say equity, is the already in retained earnings, not issuing new stock. So that's the key difference. And issuing debt. So what are the determinants of growth in a company? Well, profit margin, operating efficiency, meaning this is going back to what I said in a previous uh, discussion, lecture, that profit margin is one way to measure from the money that comes in, how much do you keep? So the more you keep, the more efficient you're operating. Total asset turnover. How well are you using your assets to create profits? Financial leverage. Choice of optimal debt ratio. Now, uh, even though what I'm going to say next is typically something discussed in higher level finance classes, optimal debt ratio, that's a choice that a company makes. We don't have yet an actual calculation that we can say, this is how you achieve optimal debt ratio. They are different preferences and practices, and it may change according to economic conditions. But... Once established, we're going to call this the optimal debt ratio. The financial leverage should pursue that. And that is one way, a simpler way to say it is how much debt should the company do? How much should they borrow? Then we have dividend policy. This is related to the payout ratio we spoke about earlier. How much are we going to pay out in dividends and how much are we going to retain? Choice of how much to pay the two shareholders versus reinvesting in the firm. For those that are in finance and, and uh, stay to other, take further classes or more advanced classes, we you will learn how that choice between these two may not affect the stock price, but it affects the growth of the company. So why evaluate financial statements? Why even bother with the ratios we spoke about in the previous video and some of these? Well, internal uses, performance evaluation. You can compare between the divisions in a company. You can compare against the same company historically. So how did you do in the past? Are you doing better now? Uh, you And then plan for the future. You can uh, put benchmarks and targets. This is how we want, this is what we would like to our ratios to look like. So let's start steering and, and, and moving the company in that direction. External uses, creditors, if you want to borrow money or sell bonds, people would like to know your financial statements and look at your ratios. If you have low liquidity, a creditor may not want to lend you money. Suppliers, are you a long-term customer or a company doesn't look like it's going to last? Suppliers also extend uh, credit in a way. Uh, but suppliers also need to know who they get into business with. Uh, customers, if you're, it depends on the company, but if you're a customer, let's say you're going to buy a car. Now, most people don't do this, but this is just an example. And a car comes with a 10-year warranty. But then when you look at the financials of the company, of that car, they're not looking too good and the, and the company may not even be alive five years from now. So you cannot count. For 10-year warranty, the company doesn't exist in five years. Now, that's just an example of how, how this could work. But um, think bigger, like big machines and factories and things like that. Stockholders. Of course, the stockholder, if you're going to invest in the company before you do, you want to look at the financial statements to see if they are a healthy company. Or if you're already in it, and as you, you already have the stock, as you evaluate those financial statements, you might want to sell the stock or buy more. Uh, benchmarking is something I kind of mentioned where you can go ahead and, and aim. You put a benchmark and you aim to achieve that. 
and then what we have here is a, a time trend analysis. Ratios need to be compared to something. So benchmarking can be your previous performance to see if you're doing better from the past and where you move it in the future. That's the time trend analysis. Peer group analysis, you're comparing against your competition or similar companies or industries, et cetera. Now, it's not a perfect system, like nothing is. There's trade-offs. Uh, some companies are very difficult to compare to others. Apple, it's a good example. Apple has computers. It has cell phones. It has their music, uh, the Apple Store, the apps. The Apple has so many divisions that while it's technology, but there's no one company that you could say like that has that similar type of uh, of mix, product mix. Sure, HP, but HP is only computers. Samsung, they have cell phones, but they have washing machines for that matter, dryers and, and uh, kitchen appliances. So it's, it's, it's difficult. Uh, uh, Procter & Gamble is another company that if you were to look at the product line, they have so many different products, it's almost impossible to compare Procter & Gamble with another company. So that happens. Uh, global competitors too, um, different uh, countries may account for things in different ways. And good luck trying to get access to their financial statement sometimes. It's just the way it works. But that's where the different accounting procedures come in. A different fiscal year ends. You'll have to line up the fiscal years. So you may not ever, you might not be able to compare companies on the current year. You also have to go past, past times to be able to match those. Uh, differences in capital structure. There's ways to try to input that in the calculations, but capital structure is, well, some people, companies have more debt than others. So while you can compare all the other, all the other numbers, but if one has more debt, there's some of the implications on, on evaluating, well, if this company has more debt, can we truly compare their return on equity or their profit margins in that sense? Seasonal variations and one-time events. Well, some companies can be difficult. Uh, companies that sell toys, let's say, for example, they do better during the last quarter because of the holidays. And they do less, not, not as great the rest of the year. They still may do well, but it's just not as heavy. So those are seasonal variations, for example. One-time events. Um, let's say, to stay away from toys, but uh, generators after hurricane, for example. So one-time event and a company that sells generators then had like a spike uh, in sales. So those things have to be controlled for when you try to compare to make sure you don't uh, get the wrong analysis and make the wrong conclusions. We will stop this video here. See you on the next one.